What's up boys welcome back to my channel today i am on madden 24 and we are going to have the best black nfl players take on the best white nfl players i made this video a few years ago on madden 22 the game went to overtime and the blacks won by three since then this exact type of game has sparked up real debate around the nfl including talk shows and well-known podcasts the funny thing is this exact video led to a large company telling me they are no longer interested in advertising their product on my channel that same company now sponsors the people talking about it today take your guess on who that is and see if I get sued for liking the correct comments. But let's get into the lineups. Latinos, Asians, and Samoans will be sidelined for this game and all light skins will be considered black. I chose the starting positions based on the highest available overall, but each side of the palette has their strengths and weaknesses, so I tried my best to fill in each team's holes. Starting with the blacks, they will be on the Pittsburgh Steelers, not because of their sleight of hand, but because of Mike Tomlin, who is the best black head coach in the NFL. At QB, they have 99 overall Patrick Mahomes with Lamar Jackson at QB2. They are loaded at halfback, but don't have much going for them at fullback. Apparently, that's a thinking man's position. But David Jokey will fill in when needed. The black wide receivers are insane. They have 99 Tyree Kill, 99 Justin Jefferson, and from there, every starter is above 94 overall. They're doing all right at tight end. They have Evan Ingram starting with Joku and Waller backing him up. At left tackle, they have 98 overall Trent Williams. I moved Taron Armstead from left tackle to left guard, and he's still a 94 overall. They're pretty weak at center. The best I could find is 83 overall Eric McCoy. 88 Trey Smith is starting at right guard. And at the other tackle, they have 95 overall Tyron Smith. Starting off on their defense, they have 99 overall Aaron Donald. At the other end, they have 98 overall Miles Garrett. They are loaded at defensive tackle between Chris Jones, Dexter Lawrence, and Quinnen Williams. At left outside linebacker, they have Daniel Hunter. At middle linebacker, they have a pair of 96s with Roquan Smith and Fred Warner. Judon will be starting at right outside linebacker. They are stacked with defensive backs, especially compared to what the Whites have at this position. They also have the best safeties in the game, including 96 overall Jesse Bates and 94 overall Minka Fitzpatrick. And the biggest hole on the entire team is at the kicking position. There are two black kicker slash punters in Madden 24. And those two are 72 overall Presley Harvin and 68 overall Corliss Waitman. And now for the white guys. They are once again on the New England Patriots and leading them at QB will be Joe Burrow, who has a slight overall edge on Josh Allen. At halfback, they have 98 overall Christian McCaffrey, and that's about it. If he gets hurt, the game is over. The Whites have 90% of the fullbacks in the game, so they're doing pretty well there. Originally, the white wide receivers were pretty limited to Cooper Cup and Adam Thielen, but this is where I made some big changes. From three to six, I have nothing but tight ends, including Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, and George Kittle. Travis Kelsey is starting at tight end and is one of 299 overalls on the team. The offensive line for the Whites is solid. They have 96 overall left tackle Lane Johnson, 93 overall Joe Thune at left guard, 93 overall Jason Kelsey at center. The other 99 overall white Zach Martin is at right guard and 91 overall Chris Lindstrom is at right tackle. Moving on to their defense, they have a strong start with their defensive ends, including 97 overall Max Crosby and 98 overall Nick Bosa. Defensive tackle is not their best position on the team, so they really only have 81 overall Harrison Phillips. At left outside linebacker, they have 97 overall TJ Watt. Matt Milano will be starting at middle linebacker, and at right outside linebacker, they have Joey Bosa. Now for the dreaded blacklist defensive back room. I did everything in my power to help them out here, and this is as good as it's going to get. I moved strong safety Andrew Wingard to starting CB, and he is a 72 overall. Riley Moss is one of two white cornerbacks in the game, and he's a 70 overall. So somehow these two have to guard Tyreek Hill and Justin Jefferson. And from there, it's just a bunch of backup safeties that I'm forcing to play DB. They're not great at the safety positions, but it could be worse. 77 overall Reed Blankenship is starting at free safety for the Whites. They have 89 overall Harrison Smith at strong safety, and pretty much their whole defense relies on him. And to top things off for the Whites, they have every kicker and punter in the game, including the record holder for the longest field goal in NFL history, 89 overall Justin Tucker. I put both of these teams in the same franchise mode and simulated to the end of the season with injuries and player progression turned off. Both teams went 16 and one, which is odd. The Patriots lost to the Giants by three points somehow, but they are also the only team to beat the Steelers, which will give them the home field advantage in the race game. The Whites were winning low scoring close games, but the Steelers were not. They were blowing out teams left and right with an average margin of victory of 26 points. 
Without any issues, both teams made it to the AFC Championship. From here, I will let the computers take over both teams and we will see which color comes out on top. The Steelers kick it off. Christian McCaffrey receives it. He thinks he has room to run with a short kickoff and the Blacks are all over him. But Joe Burrow is taking the field who is coming in with a pretty solid 37 touchdowns for the season. They give it to McCaffrey who needs to have the game of his life to give his team a chance today and he fights through contact for a six yard gain. The Whites go shotgun and they throw it for the first time and it's McCaffrey once again who gets the first down. Who will they go to next? It's McCaffrey again. He gets right past the line. He gets the first down and makes a pretty solid run for 18 yards. The Whites might just need to give him the ball every time. Their offense is clicking. They run it again, but this time it's Yuzik who makes it six yards. The Whites then throw it to someone other than McCaffrey. It was a good look, but the Blacks force the drop. Third and four, and the Whites are abusing their tight ends. They find Mark Andrews who gets the first down and then some. The Whites are playing a safe and simple game, and it's looking like they won't get shut out today. They are easily within field goal range. On the first down, they quickly throw it to McCaffrey. He gets some crazy blocks ahead of him, and they're going to move the chains again. They are at about the 20-yard line. Joe Burrow drops drops back, he spins, and he meets Micah Parsons for a loss of six. And on the next two plays, they throw for a short gain and Joe Burrows gets assaulted in the backfield, but still they don't come out of this drive empty handed. They put in their sniper, Justin Tucker, and from 47 yards out, he hits a field goal. The Blacks are coming on offense for the first time and they opt for a touchback on the kickoff. Unlike the Whites, they are trying to throw it deep, but Matt Milano swats away their first attempt. They throw it 15 yards on the next down and the Whites somehow stop them again. It's looking like this is going to be a three and out, but Mahomes simply just runs past all the a slow whites and gets himself a first down on second down the blacks find tyreek hill and they get an easy first down past midfield they then throw it to saquon barkley for seven and this white defense might already be falling apart on third and inches they find stefan Diggs for the first time and he secures the blacks another first down the blacks then drop two balls in a row that looked more like fumbles to me but on third and ten you already know what they're thinking justin jefferson torches his defender by literally just running in a straight line he's wide open and the Steelers are now on the board with a touchdown. The Whites are back on offense and they need more than a field goal this time. I'm pretty sure there are three tight ends lined up right now and one of them gets open. Joe Burrow finds Travis Kelsey in his stride, which gives them a huge 34 yards on the play. The next few plays weren't the best moments for the Whites. The best they could do is have Joe Burrow run for it and these Whites aren't known for their speed. So once again, they bring out Justin Tucker and from 51 yards, it is good. The Blacks have the ball and right away they find Tyreek Hill for an eight yard gain. They then find hill on the short pass but it's enough to give them the first down the blacks remind the whites that they still have some tight ends on their team mahomes finds ingram and makes it past the 40 yard line the blacks are moving the ball quickly but on second and seven patrick mahomes understandably so forgets which team he is playing for and throws it to the whites ashton davis the whites get shut down twice in a row on offense but on third and seven they find mark andrews open on the right side of the field for a 17 yard gain. On second and 10, Joe Burrow finds Adam Thielen on a short pass, but almost gets him killed. So on third and five, he takes it himself and almost gets himself killed, but he does get the first down in the process. Joe Burrow gets another decent throw into Adam Thielen before the end of the first quarter for eight yards. They go back to their white savior on third and short and they barely get the first down. On second down, the Whites find one of their two wide receivers, Cooper Cup, and they are well within the red zone, but the Whites cannot convert again. And they have to bring Justin Tucker, who is single-handedly outscoring the Blacks. With the Blacks on offense, they quickly get another first down with Mahomes finding Hill. On second and 10, the Whites put some pressure on Mahomes. They almost sack him, but the Black man is just too quick. He scrambles out and throws a dangerous pass, but the Whites get called for pass interference and move up 13 yards. They then give it to Derrick Henry, who runs through the White defense, and they follow that up by Patrick Mahomes running around the White defense. The Blacks give it to Derrick Henry again, who cruises his way past the defensive line for a first down. The Whites force a third and one, but I think the Blacks are starting to figure out they can outrun the Whites anytime they feel like it. It only took them 405 years. On first and goal, Derrick Henry gets inches away from a touchdown, but it's not like the Whites are going to hold the line at this point. On the next play, Derrick Henry easily gets into the end zone and puts the Blacks up 14 to nine. 
The Whites looked pretty bad on their first two plays back on offense, but Adam Thielen steps up once again and gets the Whites a much needed first down. McCaffrey is still out there fighting for his life just to give his team a few yards, and Kelsey is still a cheat code. He gives the Whites a first down. Cooper Cup is back at it again. He finds himself open, and the Whites get a big 22 yard gain. They're in the red zone again and still looking for their first touchdown. On second and seven, TJ Hawkinson embodies a white woman who is short on cash and takes takes on several blacks at once for a six yard gain. And on third and one, Cooper Cup gets them to the three yard line. So if the Whites can't score here, this is going to be a rough second half for them. But on second and goal, the Whites keep themselves alive. Cooper Cup gives them their first touchdown of the game with only three minutes to spare for the half. And the Whites are starting to feel themselves. After the Blacks get back on offense, they shut them down three times in a row and they are punting it after only gaining four yards. With a minute 50 to go in the half, with their first play, they find Travis Kelsey for a 16 yard gain and Justin Tucker is already near field goal range. Burrow finds Kelsey again for a gain of six and stops the clock. But just when I thought the Whites were peaking, turns out they were edging. Joe Burrow throws it right at the defense for an interception, and the Blacks have the ball back with a little over a minute to go. Nothing else happens for the final minute, and going into halftime, the Whites are shocking the world right now with a two-point lead. The Blacks get the ball out of the half, and Derrick Henry starts them off with a strong run. But on the next play, no one blocks TJ Watt, so he sacks Mahomes, and the Blacks are looking at third and 15. So the Whites get another huge stop and the ball back, and on third and four, Burrow is starting to figure his new offense out. The next couple of plays were a mess for the Whites, but they made it past the 50-yard line, which means Justin Tucker is ready to send a piss missile in between the uprights. And from 58 yards out, it is good for Tucker's fourth field goal of the game, and the Whites are up five. The Blacks are ready to redeem themselves and they might just have Derrick Henry do it all on his own. He gives them back-to-back -back first downs with a run and a catch. They want to keep feeding the beast, but TJ Watt gets a big time tackle for a two yard loss on the Derrick Henry run. And TJ Watt again, he hates the Blacks. Oh my God, he gets past the line and gets a sack to make it third and 18 and the Blacks have to punt again. Josh Allen is now in the game after Joe Burrow started to slow down and throw a couple interceptions, but he is just the same. He wants to exploit McCaffrey and Kelsey but nothing is working for the Patriots after that first down they got stopped at their own 35 yard line and are punting it back the Blacks have it on their own 20 yard line and don't hesitate to swing for the fences but Patrick Mahomes throws his second interception of the game to Harrison Smith but all offense is gone in this game the defense might just be too good Allen gets sacked he then throws it into traffic for an incompletion but the one piece of offense in this game that is consistent is Justin Tuck he makes his fifth field goal of the game and the Whites are now up eight. The Blacks get the ball back and need to put some points on the board, but the Chicago Bears line must have subbed in the game because before Mahomes knows it, he has three defenders on him and is sacked for a 13-yard loss. The offense in this game is at a stalemate, but Justin Tucker is going to casually break a record today. He hits his sixth field goal of the game from 55 yards out. On the kickoff, Tyree Kill decides to try his luck, which he might as well, but they fumble the ball on the contact. That could seal up this game for them, but even though three whites were all over the ball, the Blacks recovered it and dodged a bullet. And they actually capitalized on the opportunity. Mahomes finds Hill once again for a huge 31-yard gain. But on the very next play, Mahomes gets pressured. He doesn't get sacked. But once again, he turns over the ball after one of their biggest plays of the game. On the Whites' first play of the drive, they give it to McCaffrey, who finds a huge hole and makes a big gain. Joe Burrow is back in. And on third and six, he's asking to be picked off. But Mark Andrews makes a catch in tight traffic for a first down near the 15-yard line. We're now in the fourth quarter. The Whites still struggle to score more than a field goal, but a touchdown here could be a game decider. And on second and seven, Joe Burrow thinks he's being mugged, so he runs for the exit and ends up almost getting himself a first down. On third and one, they go for the quick pass and Cup catches it right next to the end zone. And on the following play, Kelsey is open in the end zone. The Whites have possibly just won the game on this drive. They are now up 32 to 14 with 13 and a half minutes left in regulation. 
The Blacks still have more than enough firepower to make something happen, but right out of the break, Mahomes gets pressured and sacked for a seven yard loss. And just when it looks like this drive is over, Mahomes rolls out of the pocket and on the move finds Justin Jefferson deep downfield. The Blacks dig themselves into a hole again on third and eight, but they calmly just throw it deep into traffic and find themselves another first down. It's third and two, but the Blacks have grown tired of running it. Mahomes throws a bad pass to Justin Jefferson, but he dives for it and catches it near the 10 yard line. On first and 10, they trick the whites and run it this time and Saquon gains nine yards on the play. And Derrick Henry finishes things off with a touchdown, making it an 11 point game with nine minutes to go. The Whites have the ball. All they need to do is run it, kill the clock, and maybe just hit a couple of field goals. But right away, they go to the error game and find Kittle for an eight-yard gain. They then go deep again and find an open Cooper Cup who catches it but is nailed by the Black defense. He fumbles it and the Blacks get the ball back. The Blacks have some trouble on offense and are facing fourth and four, but right now they are full of that exaggerated swagger of a black team and don't have a solid kicker, so they're going for it. And with a game on the line, Mahomes finds Jefferson for the first down. He hits him again in the same spot and it's second and four. And now it's Ingram who's open for another big gain and all of a sudden the Blacks are in the red zone. And Mahomes throws a risky pass into the end zone but Stephon Diggs pulls it in and the Blacks are now only down five points. And they're going for the two point conversion. They can't be stopped so why not? They find Joku open in the end zone and now they're only down three points with less than six minutes to go. The Whites need to do something big. They can't keep getting away with field goals. They start off pretty strong with an eight yard McCaffrey run. And how will they follow that up? Burrow throws it right to the Blacks for an interception. I don't know what he was thinking there, but he is on pace to get his white privilege card revoked if he keeps this up. The Blacks can easily settle for a field goal and tie this game up, but let's be honest, that's not what they're about. They start off with a nice and simple five yard gain, but then Mahomes follows that beauty up by throwing it into the end zone for a touchdown, but he is picked off and the Blacks need another stop. Josh Allen is back in the game and the Whites just need to burn four and a half minutes of clock. They go back to their bread and butter. McCaffrey gets a nine yard gain and keeps the clock ticking. Allen then makes a more risky but perfect pass to Thielen in his stride, but he forgets to catch the ball. It hits off his thigh and the clock is stopped. And on third and inches, they fake the open handoff and throw it for no gain, and they have to punt the ball. The Blacks get it back near their own 25-yard line. They go shotgun. Mahomes rolls into traffic and is sacked. He fumbles it, and the Whites recover it. Josh Allen is still in. He is the safer option. He hasn't turned it over yet, and he can run the ball and burn clock. But he goes straight for the end zone and turns it over. By golly, what is going on right now? With three Three minutes left, the Blacks still have a chance at winning this game. The first throw off the drive, Jefferson is open in the same spot for a first down. Mahomes then finds Ingram who gains eight yards on the catch and runs out of bounds. On third and two, Mahomes throws it into traffic, but Justin Jefferson makes one of the best catches of the game for another first down. We get to the two minute warning and the Blacks are on the 44 yard line with all of their timeouts and looking pretty good. On second and 10, Ingram gives them a seven yard gain and the Blacks use their first timeout. On the next play, he throws another risky pass to Ingram. These Blacks are locked in. They will not drop the ball. Out of the no huddle, Mahomes is looking deep, which is usually a bad idea, but Tyreek Hill makes an amazing catch on the two yard line and barely gets his feet down. The Whites are at their worst near the red zone. And once again, Derrick Henry goes right past the defense for a touchdown. And the Blacks have come all the way back after being 18 points down in the fourth quarter. The Whites get the ball back with a minute 18 on the clock with all three timeouts. Now, all of a sudden, they want to run the ball, which doesn't work and it wastes valuable time for them. Burrow then throws it near the sidelines and is picked off, which pretty much ends the game for them. Although their defense comes out and stops the run three times in a row, the Blacks make the field goal and are now up seven points. But with 40 seconds left, no timeouts and 74 yards to go, the Whites need to pull off a miracle. But this is not hockey. They get a few good catches in, but they don't have the clock management to give themselves a chance. And the Blacks will win this game again, 39 to 32.
All the Whites needed was three more field goals and they would have been in business. Both teams combined for a crazy 11 turnovers in this game, which I blame on the defensive abilities of the Blacks and the Whites playing zone all game. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. GG Blacks, you got us again. White people, keep your heads up. We still have hockey, farming, and line dancing, but maybe not for long, so enjoy it while you can. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out and I will see you in the next one.